is another catch here the piston is on top twice in a four stroke engine so the compression stroke is when you right here when you feel this pressure that means it this is the intake side valve and this is the exhaust side valve so now you need these tools to adjust uh the wall clearance one is this ring spanner hey guys welcome back to another episode of v builds and this episode uh actually our bike is making some weird noises tick 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 noises which increases with rpm so i'm assuming that it's the tappet the valve clearance is not adjusted properly so in this episode i'm going to show you how to adjust the valve clearance of a pulsar you can do it for any bike if you know the specs so let's do it First let me show you how it sounds. I hope you can hear the tick 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 sound. This is from the tappet. So first we need to take off the seats and the fuel tank so that we can access it properly the engine head let's do it it out this is where the intake valves are and this is where the exhaust valves are which is pretty obvious carburetor side intake valve and exhaust side exhaust valve so we have to open these two bolts and then fix it i mean adjust the clearance it's out i have opened the bolts now this is the intake side valve and this is the exhaust side valve so now you need these tools to adjust uh the valve clearance one is this ring spanner and then uh this is called feeler gauge and this is another special tool to adjust you know the gap so now let's start with the exhaust i'm sorry intake valve so now in the feeler gauge we have different measurements for this engine we have 0.06 on the intake mm and 0.08 on the exhaust so let's find it if you see directly right here this is 0.06 see how thin it is this is how much gap should be there between the walls see so little and then this is 0.08 for exhaust so let's let's put it in and do it to do this adjustment we need to make sure that the piston is in compression stroke and at top dead center so how you make sure that is by looking here so when you look at this mirror kind of thing this uh see through thing it will show a t in here so that means the uh, piston is on top but then there's another catch here the piston is on top twice in a four stroke engine so the compression stroke is when you feel a little bit of resistance in like while turning the engine that means it is in compression stroke and then you put the t on the top and so our piston will be on top dead center so that's when we do the valve adjustments so i hope i can see it now let's do it put it in top gear so one way to do it is put it in top gear and then try to rotate the wheel so we put it in top gear because it's easier to rotate the engine using the wheel when it's in top gear so we can try doing that if you don't want to open the engine compartment but uh, i think i'll have to open it i'll have to open the engine compartment because it's not clear for me in my case this glass is not as clear so i'm going to open this cover so uh, this is the t that i was talking about this means the piston is at top dead center when it is shown in this so this glass goes over somewhere here so t means top dead center and it is in compression stroke so we can move on to fixing it we need to take off uh, the spark plug first another way to detect the compression stroke is you remove this uh, spark plug when once it is out you place your finger over here and rotate this magnet when you when you feel some pressure on your finger that means the engine is trying to blow out air like right here when you feel this pressure that means it is compression stroke another way to do it is just put your screwdriver in and you see the screwdriver will move up uh, hold on 
stuck. <laughs> okay. Now you now you see um, the piston is going up and with just before it starts going down it will be on the top and now we start uh, you know uh, fixing the gap first we what we'll see is how much it is off so when you slide in this feeler gauge the this is on uh, intake side so basically the gap between the valve uh, and tap it should be 0 0.6 millimeters so you see now the gap is way too much because we can move the this feeler gauge uh, you know up and down also so now what we need to do is use this ring spanner to uh, to loosen the valve so there's this bolt which holds the valve in place at the say at the right gap so we loosen that and then we use the special tool that uh, that i just showed you earlier this special tool to tighten or at, basically to increase or decrease the gap between the wall and the tappet so and then at the same time we'll use this feeler gauge to feel if uh, how how i mean we just need to make sure the gap is 0 0.6 mm so you you understand right it's common sense so you uh, turn this tool anti-clockwise to increase the gap between the tappet and the wall and you, uh, turn it clockwise to decrease the gap and then you try feeling with the, this feeler gauge uh, slide it between uh, the gap it shouldn't be very tight also and it shouldn't be loose also so you have to make sure that the gap is just right 0 0.6 millimeter and when you feel uh, it's the right uh, amount of gap and you know the feeler gauge is stuck between the two and it's just there it's not too tight it's not too loose you leave the valve there and then use your ring spanner to tighten the valve in place uh, you know where the gap is perfect that's how you make sure you see now the resistance is correct so i can just tighten the valve clearance at this exact place check this out this is how you should feel and I can tighten the valve here. Now that's done. I will close the cap on the intake side. Who is it? Tell you, Akiran, just try to do both. Multi. And now moving on to the exhaust side. I have already opened the cap and the feeler gauge. Uh, specification for this side, as I told you already, is 0 0.8 uh, millimeters. So, again, loosen uh, the valve settings using this ring spanner and then use our feeler gauge to feel the gap. Same process, it's just that the exhaust gap is a little more than the, the intake gap. So, that's how you slide this between the uh, tappet and the yep, valve. Slide it just right in and then feel the gap and then tighten it at the right place as i just told you not too tight not too loose and just do the adjustments like that we are done on both sides and i'll cl close the exhaust side cap as well here we go and we are done adjusting everything now i'm connecting the fuel pipe back for the engine i have already connected this uh, fuel tank there goes the fuel and now we'll try starting the engine and see how it sounds if we have improved on the sound a wee bit or not right let's start it i don't think it will start in the first go but still let's see okay this bike doesn't start unless it's on neutral so i need to find the neutral first and you know since this is an old engine it's quite difficult to find it <laughs> but yeah there it is oh it started in the first go awesome okay i can still hear the tick tick sound but it's way less than before the sound is actually way better than before but it is still a little bit of that ticking noise very less compared to before let me make you listen so the sound for my bike has improved considerably and that's how you adjust the valve clearance for any bike you just need to find out the specs for the valve clearance you can find it out on the internet i just told you for pulsar 200 and we are done so i'll close it up and see you in the next one like share subscribe bye bye if you like this video please consider subscribing
confirm. He's not stopping. Code 3.